Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this little revolver that you see right here in my hands and that you guys saw me shooting throughout the intro. This is the Smith & Wesson Performance Center 442 with the Crimson Trace Grip. So Smith & Wesson has been offering a Performance Center version of this little J-frame here uh, for a couple years now. However, in 2019 they switched it up and added these Crimson Trace Grips on there. I believe these are the 105 model. Um, so basically what we're going to do today is kind of walk through this little revolver, uh, what I think of it overall, if there's anything I'd improve, those sorts of things so let's get on with it. I'm sure some of y'all out there have seen this little wheel gun here before. This is a standard Smith & Wesson 442 J-frame. I've done a couple things to it. We added these Hogue grips on there, which I really do like, the Piranha grips. And then I also installed some Wilson Combat Trigger springs in there, and I did a video on how to do that. So the reason I did it is because the trigger pull on these guns is pretty rough. Uh, before I put those springs in there, this thing was pulling right around 14 pounds. So it's pretty heavy uh, double action trigger pull. Now with the springs, it pulls right around 30 13 or 12, but it's much smoother and much easier to control. And uh, this gun has been a workhorse in my concealed carry rotation probably for the last two or three years now. And uh, it has the marks to show it. Uh, this gun's been shot a lot, it's been carried a lot, and it's one that I really do like uh, simply because of, of course, the compactness. Plus you get five rounds and it's been 100% reliable, which really kind of is a thing that draws a lot of people uh, to the Smith & Wesson J-frames. Um, but some of the things that people don't like about this like having to do a trigger job if you want to be able to shoot it a little bit faster, a little bit more accurately, uh, those sorts of things are mitigated here with our performance center model. So right off the bat, uh, it does have a performance center action job on it. I believe you can actually send your guns in to have that done to Smith & Wesson. I think it costs like $160 or $170. Um, but this has it right out of the gate. So that is sweet. Uh, the trigger pull on this one is so so much better, so much easier to get hits with. It's just smoother, it's lighter, um, and the reset is just a little bit more predictable as well. I think it's simply because it's smoother on the reset. But the break on this one's right around 11 pounds, so it's certainly not light. But in terms of the smoothness, it's much, much better. Uh, looking around on the forums, you'll probably see guys say, like, if you dry fire this thing, you know, whatever, a thousand times, you'll have a trigger like this one. You won't. Um, it'll be better. For sure, highly recommend doing a lot of dry fire with any uh, Smith & Wesson J-frame pistol that you get. It will improve the trigger for sure, um, but what you get here with the Performance Center simply is better. Um, I have both, I've done both, and take my word for it, uh, it's absolutely better. Earlier I mentioned a lot of folks go with J-frames because of the reliability, and this one's been 100% reliable through several hundred rounds at this point, and I don't expect that to change anytime soon. And another thing that people really like about it is the lightweight uh, nature of the J-frame. This one here, even with these Crimson Trace Grips, comes in right at 15 ounces on the dot, unloaded. And the thing I like about this Crimson Trace Grip versus the previous model, because I did have those and I have a full review on them, uh, if you guys want to check it out from a couple of years ago, is that it doesn't add any length to the grip. There's several companies that make laser grips uh, for J-frames and almost all of them add some length to it. Uh, these ones do not, which I really do like because I pocket carry J-frames almost always. Sometimes I'll inside the waistband carry them, but very, very uh, rarely, almost always I'm pocket carrying them and that extra length there in the grip does show and does print if you're worried about that sort of thing, much more so than your standard profile on the J-frame does here. So our activation here is instant and sort of automatic uh, with this grip. So when you grab it, you're going to actuate that laser. Now, hopefully you guys can kind of see there that it is on. One thing about the placement of this laser is that if you're you know, coming out of your holster and you're drawing down on somebody and your finger's off the trigger, uh, that laser is not gonna be on them because your finger is going to block it, as you guys can see there. Of course, as soon as you take your finger off and then, let me release that cylinder. As soon as you take your finger off, then the laser will appear there for sure. But it is something to kind of think about. If you come out and you draw and you're like, where's my laser? It's there, it's just that your finger's in the way. So let's uh, take a look at the laser on a couple different surfaces and kind of see how that looks here on camera. The fence and the paddle boat are approximately 15 feet away from me and I'm gonna activate the laser. Now, one thing I will tell you with 100% certainty is that during daylight hours, cameras don't pick up lasers as well as the human eye does. They just simply don't. I don't know of any way to mitigate that um, with editing or anything like that. Um, but we're gonna turn the laser on here and I will put an arrow there so you guys can actually see where it is on the screen. But to my eye, it's easily visible. There's no issues with it at all on the wood background. Now, if we were to move over here, on the actual boat, you can see 
uh, at least hopefully you can. To my eye, it's less easily visible. And then if we move down here on the paddles, it becomes very visible again. So that darker background seems to make it pop a little bit more, at least to my eye, and then back over here to the wood. Very, very visible, easy to see without issue. Continuing on up the frame, you'll note that our screws here, which hold the plates in place, are polished, which is really cool. It's kind of a nice little accent touch. You'll also note that our cylinder release is polished as well. Probably the thing that a lot of folks are going to be most excited about with this revolver is that there is no lock safety on there. So if you take a look here at this particular one, our standard uh, J-frame, you have the lock on there, unfortunately. Smith & Wesson puts those on a lot of models and a lot of folks don't like it, calling it the Hillary hole. Um, I tend to be one of the folks that doesn't like it. I've never seen it cause a problem with any 38 Special uh, chambered revolvers, um, but it's just kind of one of those Murphy's Law thing, in my opinion. I don't want it. If I can get one without it, I always will. So it doesn't have that. Again, that is something that I like there for sure. The cylinder on this revolver is actually different than the cylinder on this one. So this one has a carbon steel cylinder. And on this one, the Performance Center, we have a stainless steel. And it has kind of like a bead blasted matte finish. And then they go ahead and polish up the flutes on there. It really is kind of cool looking. It's also going to give you a little bit of extra corrosion resistance, uh, which is nice. Not sure it really matters uh, performance wise, but you know, if you live in a place that's very humid like I do, it's uh, nice to have, if nothing else. Uh, that said, I've never had my standard one rust on me. The trigger on the revolver also has that same polished finish on there. Again, I really think it is a very sharp looking revolver. And uh, the polishing is not just on the external pieces that you can see. Everything on the inside, like I said, has that action job, that polishing on there. And I'm going to kind of walk you through the trigger here up close and personal, go Garand thumb style on you and uh, take you through it. So you guys can kind of see right there that initial wall is what a lot of J-frame uh, shooters really have a problem with this. Uh, and they start to jerk it. Uh, this one here is about as heavy as it's going to be any time during the trigger pull. It's that initial wall, but again, on this one, it's only around 11 pounds versus the factory 14 to 15 on my other one. At this point, we're just rolling on through. You can see the cylinder starting to turn, and once you get about midway down, the pressure really lets up right about here. At this point, it's super smooth, so you can prep the trigger, get your sights on target, and shoot pretty darn good groups. I actually shot a video over on my B channel testing out some uh, carry ammo with this to see where it printed, and I actually shot a decent group just for a one take uh, shooting. So it aids you in being accurate for sure, having that ability to prep the trigger should you need to take a longer shot. The review of the uh, 442 Performance Center is still ongoing with uh, Crimson Trace uh, grips, but I really like it and I'm pretty much going to start carrying it. So I wanted to test it with my preferred 380 uh, carry load. It's the 38 Special. This is the micro stuff from Federal. You guys can see here, we have a target down range at 12 yards. And I just want to see where it prints because obviously we have fixed sights. So we'll see where it's hitting. Maybe a touch high, but I'm not mad about that. Now, for sure, uh, J-frames are not the kind of gun that you want to go out and start shooting 50-yard uh, you know, silhouettes with. That said, there's plenty of people out there that can do it. Inherently, they absolutely have the accuracy to do it. It's just practically uh, having the marksmanship fundamentals to actually be able to pull that trigger, keep it straight, and uh, throughout the entire press is difficult. That said, again, on the Performance Center, it's much easier than it is with a standard model. Now, the sights on this revolver are pretty rudimentary. So back here, molded into the frame, we have a square notch rear, and then that continues on up through the top of the frame, and then we have a serrated black front sight there. Um, in daylight, it's perfectly fine. Uh, you can see them, you know, easily. Uh, that said, some folks on this model are probably going to use the Crimson Trace grips as a sort of a primary sighting device and these as sort of backup sights. I don't do that personally. I've kind of trained myself over the years shooting J-frames a lot. There's almost never a week that goes by that I don't shoot a J-frame simply because I carry them all the time. So I always like to shoot them just to maintain some sort of proficiency with it. That said, um, if there was a upgrade or a modification that I would do to this little revolver, I would drop an excess big dot sight on there. I may do that going forward. Uh, we shall see. But um, in low light, it is a little bit difficult to pick that up. That said, the Crimson Trace laser at, the, at that point does help for sure. Barrel on this one, standard J-frame length. I think it's like 1.8 inches. And uh, for 38 Special, you're going to get, you know, 
not a whole lot of velocity out of it. Um, that said, with certain loads like the HST Micro that we tested on the channel, you really don't see any difference between this barrel and a four inch barrel, which is really cool. So if you guys haven't seen that video, check it out. Um, it's absolutely true and it was kind of crazy and surprising to me. So nowadays, companies are starting to manufacture uh, ammo specific for carry guns, which is great because that's what a lot of folks are using is these sort of micro revolvers or even micro pistols and uh, getting better performing ammo out of them certainly is a good thing. That's what I carry in this and I do carry this gun. I carry the micro H HST from Federal and it's a proven round at this point. I realize there's some new folks out there with every video. So for those that don't know, this only has a five shot capacity. That's all you get. So that's definitely a downside to any sort of J-frame revolver. Um, when you compare it to something else that folks may be looking at for a, you know, a comparable type of use, like a m and bodyguard that's going to give you seven rounds of 380, LCP, whatever the case may be, um, you get five shots. That's it. You don't get seven as you would with those two sort of micro pistols. That said, again, legendary reliability. Um, J frames are just super, super reliable. I've only seen ever in my years of shooting, which is decades at this point, one J frame have a problem, and it had a problem like in the tenth round. So it was, uh, you know, the guy just bought it, was at the range, and the the cylinder locked up. Uh, sent it back to Smith and Wesley, had it back in a week and never had another problem again. So, and I've seen a lot of J-frames. I've fired thousands and thousands of rounds from J-frames. That's the only time I've ever heard of them having an issue. So they're definitely a proven commodity at this point. I'm sure a few of you guys are watching this video at this point and you're thinking, man, I really want to get myself a J-frame for concealed carry. Which one should I get after everything I've just talked about? So again, this one, the 442 is a great gun. Uh, this one, the Performance Center 442 is a great gun as well. Performance Center obviously is going to cost you a little bit more money. I was looking around today and these suckers were coming in right around 630 bucks, which is not inexpensive. In fact, it's expensive for a Smith & Wesson J-frame. Um, that said, what do you get for your money? So again, kind of to compare the two, these ones, the standard 442 is going to be around $400-ish street price. I'm sure the MSRP on both is much higher than what I just said. Um, you get the Crimson Trace grips. These ones just looking around today online were about 150 bucks just for the grips themselves. So if you like that, you know, laser grip that doesn't add any length or bulk to it, it's uh, definitely an added value there. You get the stainless um, cylinder, which I'm not sure what that's worth market-wise. Um, you also get the Smith & Wesson Action Job, which I talked about earlier. I think it's like $160 to $170. So for roughly 230 ish street price dollars more than your standard 442, I think you get your value if you're looking for the things that this revolver comes with. If not, 442 is still a great gun. I know a lot of you guys simply want a gun that doesn't have the internal lock on it. So if that's you, here you go. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's my take on it, guys. Um, reliability has been awesome, like we said. It's already in my carry rotation, so there's no doubt that I do trust this gun um, for deep carry, deep concealment. It's really hard to beat a J-frame, very easy to draw out of your pocket. They're snag-free. And again, you might only get five shots, but you get five shots, right? You just almost always, 99.9% .9 of the time, this gun is gonna work when you need it, which is super critical, right? That's definitely something that most of us who carry a gun to protect ourselves want and value very, very highly. If you guys have any questions about this revolver, by all means, post them below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. If you're subscribed and you're not seeing at least three videos a week here on the channel, make sure you hit that notification bell. If you've already done that and you're still not seeing them because YouTube, for whatever reason, doesn't like to show my viewers my videos, it is what it is. Make sure you head over to uh, mrgunsandgear.com. You can sign up there for my email. You can also sign up over at my Facebook page under the sign up tab. Either way, I send out a weekly email with the videos of the week and then also a few deals that I find along the way. That way, you can ensure that you guys will actually see my videos whenever I put them up. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Truly appreciate it, and I hope to see all of you in the next video.